Happy New Year everyone and welcome back. We hope you all had a wonderful break, because we certainly did. Now, we thought we'd kick off the new year with something we haven't done for a while. Today we are going to be reviewing one of Dell's mid-range laptops. This is the Dell Vostro 3515 Ryzen 3. This laptop retails at around £755 in the UK today, although on Dell's official website it is now £490. What a bargain! Let's have a look at some specs. This laptop has an AMD Ryzen 3 processor, 2 core and 4 thread. It has shared Radeon graphics, 8GB DDR4-2400 RAM, 256GB NVMe SSD, 15.6 inch Full HD display, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and a 3-cell 41 watt hour battery. Now let's unbox this laptop. This laptop is reasonably lightweight and comes in a neat and sleek design. It has a 10 key numeric keyboard with a touchpad located slightly to the left of the machine. As mentioned before, this machine has a Ryzen 3 processor and Radeon graphics. The lid of the laptop is smooth and simple with a fully plastic case. There are various vents and fans located at different points across this machine. As you can see, there is one just below the screen to prevent excessive heating as this usually is the hottest area of the machine when running. And also a large one across the back as well. Now let's look at the ports. On the right of the machine, we have an SD card reader, a USB 2.0, an RJ45, a headset jack, and a wedge-shaped lock slot. On the left, we have a power jack, a HDMI 1.4, a USB 3.2 Gen 1, and another USB 3.2 Gen 1. Here you can see the quality of the camera and the microphone on this machine. So this machine, as you can see, has a pretty clear both microphone and camera, which is great for when you want to use it for conference calls or anything of the sort. So now on to the benchmarks. We usually run a series of different benchmarks for each of our machines to give you a true representation of how the machine really works in terms of power and performance. First up is Cinebench. The first test we are doing is multi-core. I increased the speed by 15 as the real-time capture was over 25 minutes long. Next is single core. I again increased the speed by 15 for the same purposes.
Here are the Cinebench results. The multi-core test for this machine gave a score of 1,809, which is not that high compared to some of the other machines visible on the results graph, although not the lowest. Next is single core, which gave a score of 768, which again is not very high if we compare them to the other machine. We also tested some other productivity benchmarks, and the first one we tested was 3D Mark, which essentially gives you an insight on how a particular machine will run in a game. The result of this machine was very low at 385, not great. Next up is PC Mark, which tests things like conference calling. Yet again, the results came back rather poor, ranking the machine at the bottom of the list. We hoped for some better results when we tested Geekbench, and as you can see, the result was still poor, however, not at the bottom this time. The last of the productivity benchmarks is Crystal Disk Mark, which tests the read and write speeds of a machine. Here are the results for this one. We also tested the power of this machine. Firstly, we tested how long it would take for the laptop to charge from 0% to 100%. The result of this was one hour and 55 minutes. Next was Battery Eater. This program essentially tests how long it takes for the battery of the machine to die when not plugged in and running at full power. The result for this machine was 1 hour and 17 minutes. And lastly, we have the YouTube video test. This is essentially where we leave a YouTube video running for as long as possible until the machine runs out of battery. The result for this machine was 7 hours and 50 minutes. Again, whilst this wasn't the poorest score out of them all, it still wasn't great. We also captured the thermals of this machine whilst running at full power to give you an insight on exactly how hot this machine can get. As you can see here, the temperature reaches around 38 degrees, which is quite hot. But if we go around the back of the machine, it picks up an even hotter temperature of 42 degrees. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Overall, this laptop proves to be a very basic machine, best fit for business purposes such as Microsoft Office, general web use and conference calling. However, in terms of gaming and high performance slash power use, we recommend going for a machine with a better processor and power results. If you are looking for a machine with a more efficient performance, then it is worth forking out a little bit extra money for better quality. We hope this video was useful. We have plenty of other videos like this on our channel, so feel free to go and take a look at those. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified whenever we post a video. That will be all from us here at Enology, and we will see you next time. Bye.